the Grandstream GXV 3470 Android IP video phone. We've got it and we've used it and this is our video review. Hey, welcome into the video. This is Chris with Accent and in this video we are going to be reviewing the GXV 3470 Android IP video phone from Grandstream. We're going to take a look at the phone's specs, the phone's design, uh, and you discuss some of the ins and outs of a phone like the GXV 3470 and the GXV lineup as well. We want to break down some of the things that we like, some of the things that we scratch our head about from time to time, and hopefully you walk away from this video with a good idea of how it's going to function if you choose to use it inside of your business. All right, so with that, let's get into it. Okay, so the Grandstream GXV 3470, one of the latest additions to Grandstream's GXV series of IP video phones where uh, Grandstream takes the Android operating system and merges it with uh, some uh, basic tenets of a VoIP desk phone, blends those two things together uh, to create, in this instance with the 3470, what we would consider to be uh, more of a power user, advanced user type of desktop phone. There's some other models in the GXV series which uh, are a little more uh, geared toward a, a general business user and not the advanced user, uh, namely uh, the 3350 and the new 3450 as well. We say that those are generally geared more toward the uh, general user because those models, the 3450 and the 3350, combine the Android OS with a more traditional desk phone environment with uh, buttons, uh, feature keys, a 10 digit, or excuse me, a 12 key, uh, 10 digit uh, keypad, and that more traditional look and feel. The 3470, as you can see it right here, um, doesn't have really any dedicated buttons for uh, general business use. It's got some navigation buttons at the bottom here. As you see, I touch it and the screen lights up. It's got some navigation buttons that you might find on many Android type devices, tablets, phones, uh, Android smartphones, etc. There's no physical buttons as far as to manage calls, you know, conference call, transfer, no physical buttons for like the speakerphone, for instance. There's no physical buttons for you know, BLFs or quick dials, anything like that. Everything is designed for uh, you, the user to interface with the Android OS via the touchscreen. Now, the execution of it, it being the Android OS and the telephony features in the OS, the execution of it is done just fine. You know, I can lift the handset and the telephony interface comes up. I hang the handset up, telephony interface goes down. I've got a dedicated button for the interface as well. However, for a, what I'll call non-power user or a general business user, the Android OS and the Android interface as an everyday desk phone can sometimes be a bit overwhelming, a little too much, potentially not offer quick enough access to regular features like transfer, like conference, especially if you are uh, handling a large volume of calls. Maybe you're a call center agent or you're a your front line uh, answer point. And so you have to kind of balance access to all the capabilities of Android with just the efficiency of a more traditional desk phone uh, design. And so that's why I continue to think that myself personally, like as a power user, I like phones like this. I think they're pretty cool. I think for a general user, it's more of a bit of a challenge. You put this phone in front of a general business user. We work with a lot of them here at Accent. They're trying to get their job done. The phone is a tool. It's not a toy. For some folks like myself, others in the industry, these things become toys. We take interest in them. General business users that are trying to get their work done, get on to the next thing, take a call, get off the call, etc. Maybe a little bit too much for those types of folks. So that's why often you'll see me come on one of our videos. We've done a ton of these about different types of phones, whether it be the GXV phones or the phones that 
Yealink has developed where they've merged Android together, or, or you know any manufacturer that's done it. And, and I'll continue to say that I like the phones. I think they're they're cool. I think they're powerful. Um, they give you a lot of capability. I just don't know if they're the right fit for many business users. Um, again, especially business users that are trying to get their job done and get on to the next thing. You might have a, a power user. Maybe they're big into the tech. They're big into um, you know bells and whistles, whatever the case may be. Those folks might like, might love this type of phone. There could be a special application. Don't get me wrong. There are special scenarios where it's nice to have uh, the Android interface available to maybe run an app in the background or have access to, I don't know, maybe a video feed or something like that. But just don't know if it's a great fit for uh, the general business environment. We don't recommend it uh, to many of our general cloud business users. Uh, we do have some customers using different GXV phones in different scenarios. Um, it's really a case-by-case -case basis, and you have to kind of know your needs, know your customer, um, know your users, and uh, you know, make your own decisions whether or not it's a, it's a good fit for your people or your customers. So initial impressions of the GXV 3470 is it's very similar in kind of feel and design to uh, the previous GXV models and the Grandstream lineup. So if you've used any of their uh, phones in the past that have blended Android and are go by the moniker of the, the GXV, uh, it's going to look and feel very similar in functionality and design. It's running a newer build of Android. So, uh, you know, you have um, that as a bonus. It runs the Android 11 operating system. And uh, right out of the gate, you can see that the biggest difference with this design, as opposed to some of its predecessors in, in this GXV series, is that the display is now oriented in a, in a um, vertical orientation as opposed to or portrait, some might call it, as opposed to a landscape or horizontal orientation. I think I actually like that better than the horizontal orientation. I think the um, just if you look at phone design over the years, over the you know decades that we've had desk phones, business desk phones especially, they are designed in more of a vertical orientation than a than a landscape. Don't get me wrong; there are phones out there that have more of a landscape feel to them. I just feel that um, the horizontal or the uh, portrait model, portrait orientation, actually fits better and, and, and feels better when you're using the phone on a regular basis. And so uh, I actually like the idea of the, the vertical orientation over the, the horizontal orientation of the phone and the, the other models. There are uh, GXV models that will that have both horizontal and vertical. There's a, a Newer model, the 3480 for Grandstream, that is a horizontally oriented. So you know you can you can pick and choose what you like. You can mix and match these. And if you've got a user that likes horizontal, a user that likes vertical, you know no problems there. You can uh, you know choose whichever one you like, and they look and feel and operate almost identical to each other. So those are but that's a bonus. So as far as the if you're using the the devices in the GXV line, uh, going from one to another is is pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, one might have a newer build of, of Android uh, because you really can't upgrade the Android builds uh, with any, with any you, know, you can't take a, an older phone that was, say, like on Android 7, Grandstream, and I haven't found a way to move it up to like Android 11. I don't think they support that. So you, know, you kind of have to buy the new models to get the newer build of Android. Uh, but other than that, really, the, the GXP models, they all look and feel and operate very similar. Okay, let's dive into the technical specs of the phone a little bit and pull up the Grandstream website right here and uh, just see what Grandstream has to say about the device technically. Um, the Just like many of the GXV devices, uh, you've got the ability to add up to 16 SIP accounts. That's 16 different phone systems, phone services, SIP services. Have fun with that. Uh, generally, don't see more than one or two being used for most business cases, use cases. Um, I've got a, a built-in 2-megapixel CMOS camera for video calling with privacy shutter. You will hear my thoughts on um, video calling and webcams and phones just here in a desk phones here in a bit. As I mentioned previously, it runs the Android 11 operating system as well. Uh, I've got built-in Bluetooth 5.0 for uh, seeking with mobile devices and connecting Bluetooth headsets. So what they mean about seeking with mobile devices here is that you could actually connect the uh, phone to uh, via Bluetooth to your uh, 
any really Bluetooth cellular phone, mobile phone, etc., and you can kind of uh, use it as the uh, speaker or handset and microphone off of your cell phone if you'd like to do that. So, you know, that's up to you. Bluetooth headsets, um, as far as Bluetooth headsets go, especially in a business environment, I don't love them uh, connected to VoIP desk phones, any desk phone. I don't love them. Um, I think there's a level of quality that some Bluetooth headsets out there just don't deliver that people are looking for in a desk phone. I've actually been on calls years ago with folks where I had a Bluetooth headset connected to a desk phone. It was a Grandstream phone, actually. And I had a, a potential customer actually asking me if that was a, a call quality issue with our service. I was, it was actually really it was frustrating to me to hear that. Uh, I immediately kind of jumped off the Bluetooth headset, picked up the handset. He said the call quality was much better. The audio quality, excuse me, was much, much better after that. Uh, I never used that Bluetooth headset again. I do really like decked headsets a lot. Decked and Bluetooth are very different wireless technologies. Uh, you can do some research on deck. We've done some decked videos or some videos on some decked stuff in the past. And so I think in business instance, you really should be looking for um, a decked cordless phone or a, excuse me, decked cordless headset. My only um, my only caveat to that would be I think the Apple AirPods are the you know some of the best implementation of a Bluetooth headset going, but that's really specific to, to Apple. So we continue with the uh, GXV. Um, Auto sensing 10 100 1000 network port that should be standard everywhere now. I integrated dual band Wi-Fi got a lot of issues with running VoIP phones on Wi-Fi. We've talked about those in the past. <laughs> Don't love it. Um, Built-in PoE for power network connection just supports PoE coming in from the network. Um, one thing I do like about all the Grandstream phones, they do come with a power supply. A lot of phone manufacturers don't include that, so you know, good job Grandstream in including a power supply to actually plug it in the AC power outlet. Um, I don't think Yay Link provides power supplies in their phones. As an example, you have to order those separately. They charge you for them basically. Um, Dual mic HD speakerphone. Uh, speakerphone's been pretty solid in Grandstream phones from our experience. We use a lot of them, no, no qualms. It's not a conference speakerphone. It's not a multi-party, get around the table, have six or seven people on a conference call type speakerphone. That's not the right tool for, this is the tool for that job. We've got speak conference phones that we recommend. We've done reviews on them. We'll link them above. Yaling's got good models. Grandstream's got some models as, as well. Admittedly, we haven't really dove into those much. We usually center around Yaling, so just you know, keep that in mind. Uh, it's got a quad core, two gigahertz ARM Cortex processor, two gig RAM, sixteen gig of flash. Um, the processing power and the uh, you know CPU was just fine for it if I'm just using it as a desk phone. Don't push this thing like it's an Android tablet. Certainly, don't push this thing like it's a, like it's a uh, anything more than just a desk phone. Um, you, you can't, we had a hard time managing multiple video streams on it. Uh, if you're running any you know, complex apps on it or any apps that are really pushing the processing, you're going to have problems. It's just a desk phone at the end of the day, so beware. It's got a nice 7 inch 800 by 1280 capacitive touch screen with the vertical orientation, as you can see on the picture here. I, I did mention that I thought the, um, I do think the uh, vertical orientation uh, fits better in a, a desk phone context than the horizontal orientation of some of the predecessors of this device. And you can attach it to some peripherals, including uh, an HDMI out. You can connect it to an RJ9 headset, USB, etc. Those are all pretty standard with the GXV models, GXV line nowadays. Um, Ten-way audio conferencing. That's that's audio only, so you can connect up to ten other. You can basically call ten other people and connect them into an audio uh, an audio conference. And then three-way 720p HD video conferencing. That's using a uh, standard like H.264, VP9, et cetera, to do the video conferencing, that's not like a Zoom or a Teams. That's more specific to does your, do you have a PBX or do you have some type of platform that supports those that you can actually tie a SIP, a SIP account to? It's, it's very different than what I'd say most general business users are, are used to. As far as some of the telephony specific things that Grandstream's done to the uh, their Android build, uh, they've got a nice addition of uh, widgets that um, you can kind of customize and add to the different the, the different screens on the phone. Um, you can add VLFs, speed dials, feature keys, uh, really a lot of different functions that are, give you quick access on the actual touch screen itself. That's customizable via the user, or you can push those out via, via like provisioning profiles, etc. 
Android is, or excuse me, Grandstream's done a good job there in um, a lot of flexibility for uh, the power users that might want to take advantage of the device. Uh, so you can really load up the uh, the screens with a lot of different access to a lot of different capabilities right there with the uh, the widget functionality. Um, there, the built-in Android dialer um, you know, has all the kind of features you'd you'd be interested in. You know, so I can just you know very easily access that dialer, and I've got access to um, take this off so I don't hear that in the background. I've got access to uh, call history, contacts, dialer right from the display here. Probably tough to see on the camera. Um, and then you know I can initiate a call very easily. You know it's got the integrated access to corporate dial book, corporate phone book. Um, it actually, I pulled up my I pulled my Google contacts into it as well. Uh, so you can you know integrate kind of a personal contact book or a uh, corporate contact book as well. There's a lot of things you can do with the phone that um, you know I just if a power user, an advanced user would take advantage of, but a general business, business user is, is going to want, um, you know, just kind of a more, I think, more of a efficient and slimmed down experience than, you know, having uh, the Swiss Army knife, which the, the GXP device is. Another aspect of the 3470 and really all of the GXV phones, in fact, a lot of just phones in the marketplace today that I, as well that I, I'm not too fond of, and I've got a video on this that we'll link above here as well, is uh, the idea of including a camera in the desk phone. Um, you, a lot of manufacturers are including cameras, and especially in high-end desk phones, um, certainly in the GXV, the V stands for video with Grandstream, the GXV models, they're including video camera in all of those. Um, and and the, the purpose and the intent, the marketing shows it as this case is very clear, that these, these phones are designed for video conferencing. Now, um, there's there's two things that I really don't understand about. I'm ranting again about cameras and, vid and phones. Again, if you have seen my videos previously on this, I it really bugs me. There's there's two things that uh, that bother us here about uh, cameras and phones. The the first or desk phones, I should say. The first thing is that uh, the angle that it shoots is just atrocious. Um, you know, I've got a much better angle here on my desktop. I'm just using a webcam. I mean, I don't have a, a high production studio here where I'm using a, you know, a cinema camera to record these. Some of you can probably tell, but I've got a better angle here than I do with a desk phone shooting straight up at my chin and my nose, which is really not a great, um, not a very pleasing angle for, for many folks. That's the first thing. I just don't think it looks very good. The second element is I haven't seen where these um, phones have enough processing power to handle multiple video streams. I certainly know in the video uh, conferencing and the video calling that we tested uh, with the, the 3470, it doesn't have enough processing power to handle multiple video streams, not more than one or two. So I'm sending a video stream and I'm receiving a stream. That's two streams. I've got to process that. After that, um, certainly not three or four streams. Absolutely not. Um, there's just too many uh, folks that are too accustomed to video meetings and conferencing on, you know, your, your computer, your laptop, your meeting rooms, etc. I just think it's a waste of time. And I don't know anybody that actually does video calls or video conferencing on um, uh, on their phone. We've certainly done videos in the past. This was years ago about video calling on the GXV model phones and to Yealinks and, and others. And that was before uh, 2020. That was before, uh, you know, Meeting, con meeting services became so popular, Accent meetings, Zoom, Teams. It was before the proliferation of all of these things. And so uh, we're in a different world now, post-2020. People are set up much better for video conferencing. We've got personal collaboration devices all over the place that allow people to do video conferencing from their laptop, their computer, their smartphone as well. And so it just doesn't make sense for, for VoIP manufacturers, desk phone manufacturers, to continue to be pushing these phones that have you know a video camera in the top I think it's a waste of money. I think it's a waste of time, resources. I don't think people buy off on it. We've got, we're in the trenches with business users on a daily basis. Nobody's asking us for video, for webcams or video cameras in their phones. There could be a 1% scenario with a unique environment. Maybe you've got a door phone. Maybe you've got a phone in a lobby area. Maybe you've got a phone um, in some unique environment where you got to have a camera on it so you can see who's there. Okay, I get that. 99% of the time, you aren't going to need a video camera and a desk phone, period.
All right, so just to summarize everything here with the GXP3470, you know, it's, it is a solid device. It does function very well for, you know, what it really should be used as, and that's a, you know, power user desk phone. Again, not really a big fan of uh, video meetings or video conferencing with the phone. I uh, think that if you're a power user and you want that Swiss Army knife capability or you've got a unique kind of scenario that the phone will uh, provide a solution to where you need to run maybe some apps or you need access to uh, some unique web content that Android can serve up, I think uh, you know that's that's a perfect application for the phone. If you are uh, the general business user that's looking to get things done quick, uh, have some dedicated buttons for uh, right there on your phone for things like transfer, conference, hold, park, etc. May not be the best device for you. Uh, it just kind of depends on what your use case is, what your needs are, and what type of user you are. We really hope this video has been insightful and informative. We hope this has given you a real-world idea of what the 3470 is like and how you may use it or not use it in a business environment. Um, if you've got any comments on our take or you are using the 3470 or you're interested in the 3470, drop us a comment below, please. We do respond to all comments and we appreciate your engagement. We also hope that this video has been informative and insightful. If you're looking to purchase the 3470 as well, and or if you've purchased it and maybe you're just wanting to understand what other people think of it or you're interested in making a buying decision, you haven't gone through that process yet, but this is the start, maybe the middle or the end, we appreciate you coming out and checking out our thoughts. We also appreciate your support of this channel greatly. Please, if you like this video, leave it a like. If you think there is somebody out there that can find this video useful, share it with them as well, please. It really does help the channel if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to our channel, Accent Voice, where we post a variety of different telecommunications, cloud communications, VoIP, and other subject videos on a regular basis. There's new content coming out all the time. If you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, you will be notified when we post a new video. If you want to learn more about Accent, go to AccentVoice.com where you can learn about Accent's cloud phone system services, team messaging, video meetings, Microsoft Teams, voice services, and a variety of other cloud communication services as well. As always, we really appreciate your support and thank you for watching till the very end of the video. This has been Chris with Accent. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way we can see you next time.